Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my Let's Play Modded Minecraft Survival Series. This is Dino and in the previous episode we were working on the um, the blacksmith shop, finishing that up. And in this episode we're going to actually start crafting our first set of ma machines required for ore processing. So sit back and enjoy. So. In the previous episode, I started working on these two machines, the pulverizer and the redstone furnace, and derped all over the place. So rather than embarrassing myself again, I decided to go ahead and finish up the ore processing configuration off camera. And as you can see, this is what I've come up with. So I, I set down these two machines completely out of order, forgot that we needed an energy source, all those kinds of um, important things. And so what I've done is I went ahead and created a steam dynamo to power our machines. To create a steam dynamo, you do this. It requires a ton of copper and some redstone, a silver ingot, and all that kind of good stuff. So went ahead and crafted this, hooked it up to Enderio cables, which I love. I just love the Enderio mod. These cables are, are awesome. They're very compact and efficient. <clears throat> Excuse me. And with that, we can power all three of our machines. An alloy smelter. I needed an alloy smelter to, I believe, craft some conductive iron for something. And I, to be honest with you, I don't remember what it was I needed that for. But I did craft that up, placed it there. We're running power to it. We're running power to the back of the pulverizer and also to the back of the redstone furnace. To keep the redstone or the steam dynamo cool, I also crafted this water reservoir from Remote IO, and that's a brand new mod to me. I've, I don't have much experience with Remote IO, um, but I'd seen somebody in another Let's Play series. Um, unfortunately, I can't remember whose it was, but I saw them craft this item and thought, "Oh, that would be kind of cool. I'll check into that." So, basically, a water res reservoir is crafted like this. So it's, it's pretty inexpensive. I mean, it's just four stone blocks, four glass blocks, and a water bucket, I believe. So that's pretty pretty inexpensive. And basically what you do is you, it's a, it's a simple block. You basically place it down, and then you put two water source blocks right next to it, and that will activate it. And so from then on, it will basically process the water sources and generate an infinite supply of water. And that goes into the dynamo to keep it cool. And you just give it a fuel source and it'll create steam, which will power our, our machines. So, um, so yeah, I think this produces water at like a quarter of a bucket per tick. So I'm not sure how fast that is, um, to be honest. But it's plenty enough to keep the steam dynamo happy. So that works out really well. So let me go ahead and go over this configuration real quick um, and just kind of explain my thought process in, in, in creating this ore processing system. So basically the pulverizer takes ores, pulverizes those ores down into dusts which get collected over here. And then from there, this item conduit automatically pulls the dust out and stores it in this sorting iron chest which is a refined relocation storage unit from there so so pretty much anything that gets pulverized gets pulled out of the pulverizer and stored in this chest the chest above it is another sorting iron chest but i have it filtered such that only dusts get stored in this unit and then the dusts get automatically pulled out of that chest via the item duct there and then come into our redstone furnace. 
the dust then gets smelted into ingots, which then get pulled up and stored into the chest above it. And as you can see, I've been really, really busy processing quite a number of the ores that we've collected in our introductory episodes. And you can see I've got a lot of cool stuff. So really, really nice, efficient system. And we're going to need a lot of this for future crafting. So, so basically, you put the ores in this chest. The hopper deposits those ores into the pulverizer. The pulverizer mashes them up into dust. Everything gets pulled out into this chest. Dusts then get pulled into this chest automatically come over to the redstone furnace and gets melted into ingots which gets stored in the chest above that. So let me go over these chests real quick because this is a, a new capability to me as well and I thought this is a really really neat storage system. So basically these if you just open them up they just act like chests. Both of these. But what's neat about them is that they're sorting chests. So if you right click on this particular chest you'll bring up the sorting iron chest GUI. And this is basically your filtering system. So you can apply any kind of custom filtering you want up here. You can make it a whitelist or a blacklist. And you can set its priority, which zero is normal. And then you've got all these predefined filters in this long list below. And that's what really makes this really, really a cool mod and really, really convenient. So you can filter on all ingots, all ores, all logs, all planks. Here's all dusts, crushed ores, purified ores, plates, gems, on and on and on. And if you scroll down here, you'll notice that it'll even have things like um, Industrial Craft 2, Thom craft, craft Artifice, Eureka, Build Craft, Thermal Expansion, Modular Flower Pots, random things, refinery location, basically all of the mods that I've installed in this custom mod pack are already already have filters applied for them. So that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. So you'll see that this one does not have a filter applied. So that's the reason why a moment ago I mentioned that basically anything and everything gets pulled out of this pulverizer and gets stored over here because there's no filter applied. But this one above it if you look at its filter, it does have a filter applied to it, and it's basically filtering all dusts. The way refined relocation works is that you basically place chests side by side, and as long as the chests are placed side by side, they act as a storage network. So they're infinitely expandable, and as long as they're side by side, they're all basically connected to one network. Then, when you want to put something in your storage system, your storage network, you can place you can place any item in any chest, and if there's a filter for that item, it'll automatically get moved to that chest. So that is really really nice. So as you can see, these two chests are side by side. So these two chests are basically acting as one storage network. And when dusts come into this chest here, because there's a chest that has a filter for dusts those dusts automatically get moved to that chest. So that's what's happening here. So that's why everything is coming out of here, going in here, dusts immediately get moved up to its appropriate chest, and then this item duct is pulling anything out of this chest that can actually go into the redstone furnace. The redstone furnace then smelts it and stores the stuff up there. So that's the, that's the way this configuration is working. And that's that's pretty, I think that's pretty efficient. I've been trying to think of maybe, a, is there a way to maybe make this a little more compact? But um, yeah, you know, I could probably move the steam dynamo maybe underneath it or something like that. But to be honest, I think it's perfectly fine where it's at. Um, this way, if I have more um, machines that require RF energy, um, I can basically plunk, plop them up here and, uh, and it'll be really easy to connect them. So that was sort of my thought process there. Um, obviously there's not a whole lot of room in this corner so I'm not sure to what extent I'll be doing that probably not but um, but you know I think it's I think it's pretty pretty good the way it is so let's see um, yeah I know that you can apply an upgrade to these item ducts so that they basically are always processing 
i.e. they've got a redstone applied to them all the time. Um, but I didn't do that in this case. That's the reason for the switches here and here. Um, they're to power on the item conduit, so I'll probably want to apply that upgrade in the, in the future, but eh, I'm not going to worry about it right now. It seems to work pretty well. So let's see, what else? Oh, okay, yeah. So another um, another machine that I crafted is this machine right here, and it's mis... I don't know why it's metadata is showing incorrectly. It's showing a water reservoir similar to this guy over here. Um, you'll notice this has a blue texture around it um, reflecting water. This one has a red texture here reflecting lava. So this actually is not a water reservoir. This is actually a lava heater, which is all, also um, a block in remote I.O. And it acts just like the water reservoir. You craft it, and it's a really simple crafting recipe as well. And then you basically place it down where you want to have it, and you put two lava source blocks next to it, and then it'll light up just like you see in front of me. And what it does is it basically sends heat or power to the furnace in front of it, and you'll notice this is lit. So the reason why I did that is because um, I was needing to smelt up a bunch of grout and I was getting tired of using up all my coal because I'm really really low on coal right now I've only got 22 the uh, the steam dynamo over there just eats coal like candy so I was running out of coal and um, whenever I needed to process you know sand to glass or grout to seared bricks <clears throat> Um, I was getting tired of using up all my coal, so I crafted this item, and it's really slick because basically, there's my seared brick. Um, so basically, this furnace is running all the time, and it's running off of the heat generated from that machine, which is pulling the heat from the lava beside it. So this is a basically an always-on furnace, and I think it smelts a little bit slower than your vanilla furnace, but not much. And I figure, you know, it's a free source of fuel for um, smelting things, so it's probably a, a worthwhile trade-off. So I went ahead and um, did that, and I think it's going to be really useful. So, yeah, let's see, what else did I do? Oh, yeah, so I also crafted these crafting stations, because as I mentioned in the previous episode, or maybe it was two episodes ago, I wanted to upgrade the crafting table because I was getting tired of the items getting dropped out every time I had to walk away because I forgot something which happens all the time so I decided to go ahead and craft these um, better storage crafting stations and um, I like them I, I had two choices there's the crafting station that Tinker's Construct offers I believe and then there's this crafting station that better storage offers and I like this one a little bit better in that it gives you this kind of a chest storage area underneath your crafting station, your crafting area. And you can basically just leave items in here that you commonly use a lot and they'll, they'll just stay stored there. So in addition to actually keeping the items on the crafting table, you can actually store commonly used items underneath it as well and they'll just stay here almost like a built-in chest. So I think that's pretty sweet. So that's why I went ahead and crafted this. I actually crafted two of them, one's here and one's upstairs. I replaced the one upstairs as well. So um, I guess I should take a pause and, and make mention that um, this is actually the second time that I've recorded this episode. I actually did this episode already once before, and I don't know why or how, but for some reason Camtasia derped on me and messed up the audio portion of the recording. For some reason, it got out of sync with the video. And that's happened before, and I've been able to correct it fairly easily, but unfortunately in this case, the audio got out of sync, and then when I finally figured out how to get it back in sync, about three minutes later, it got out of sync again. So the audio was really, really messed up. So I opted to go ahead and redo this episode again. So I had every intention of stepping you through the ore processing configuration. <clears throat> so that's pretty much the same. But I actually had saved crafting the crafting station and the additional bricks that I need to finish the smeltery that in the uh, blacksmith shop so but because of that episode kind of got all messed up and I've already 
done those craftings, um, I'm actually stepping through them now. So I apologize for that. I know some people like to to watch um, um, Minecrafters um, do some crafting when they're kind of newer, interesting um, blocks. So again, yeah, I apologize for that, but it, I guess it is what it is. So anyway, I did that. Let's see, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I kind of cleaned up the back side of this basement area a bit. Um, if you'll remember before, this kind of went diagonally over to the far wall. And what I did was I kind of squared it out a bit. And the reason I did that is because um, I'm probably going to put our storage area over here in this indentation of the wall. And I'll probably just do something really, really similar to what I did over here. I'll probably create some iron chests and make them sortable. And then we'll just put our chests here, and then we can go up and up. And basically have as many chests as we want right here. Because again, remember what I said a moment ago, if the chests are side by side, they act as one network. So I can literally come up here, grab any chest, plop stuff in there that I want to store away, and it'll automatically go to and get distributed to the appropriate um, chest where they belong, based on their sorting rules. Um, additionally, Java works really well with the sorting um, system also. So I can have a combination of chests and Java barrels anywhere in here, and as long as they're sortable, I, uh, I've upgraded them to, to be um, filterable, then they will all be, you know, act as one big storage network. So that's pretty sweet. So that's what I did there also. Um, yeah, let's see, what else? I think that's about it for down here. Um, the next thing I wanted to do, um, which I did in the previous recording, but we'll be redoing it, we're doing it again, is I thought we would go, oh, it's raining. Um, I thought we would uh, finish up the smeltery up here. Let me see if it's nighttime. Nope, it's not night yet. Okay, that's fine. Kind of hard to tell when it's raining. Oh, there's the sun. So yeah, so what I did was, um, make sure there aren't any mobs in here. I was surprised by a skeleton last time. It's all safe. Okay, good. So what I did was I moved... I originally had the smeltery a little more into the center of the room so that I could have wa a walkway around it. And I kind of see that a lot of people that have the Tinker's Construct smelteries really don't do it that way. They kind of put it in the corner because they don't typically use these other sides. I guess they find that one or two of the basins and tables are, are plenty in, um, enough for, for their purposes. So I went ahead and, and moved it over to the corner, just like you see here. Um, did I block this out? No, I didn't. Um, I'll probably want to put some blocks in here. I guess for now I'll just put that there. I don't want a skeleton spawning in the corner or a zombie. So yeah, so basically they put it in the corner, so I went ahead and moved mine to the corner as well. And then um, place down the blocks that I had, realized that I don't have the um, I don't have the drain or the faucet, so I had to craft those, which was that was fine. I had a bunch of seared bricks and that worked pretty well for those. But then I ran out of seared bricks, so then I had to go um, make some more grout and I found that I didn't have uh, enough gravel, so I had to go get a bunch of gravel. Anyway, I got enough seared bricks to go ahead and finish up crafting what we were needing, but then I realized that I'd forgotten the tanks, so I had to go craft some tanks. Anyways, I just missed some things and wound up having to do more um, smelting of, of seared bricks. But here you go. So, got our tanks, got the controller, I had to craft the controller as well. Um, got my windows so I can kind of see inside the unit what's going on. And I think this is pretty much good to go. I need to get some lava and put it in there as its fuel source, but I think we're good. So if I do find that I need um, maybe another basin or, or um, table or whatever, I, you know, I, I guess I could always move this wall a little further back and add another um, unit over here on this side. That would be fine. That wouldn't be that hard to do. Um, I was also thinking about maybe moving the rest of the smelting equipment in here, the other furnaces and stuff, but I don't know. Um, I might. There's plenty of room in here for it, and it kind of sticks to the theme of the blacksmith shop, but I don't know that 
it will be very convenient to have my storage system in the basement and then have every, all the furnacing stuff over here. I suppose if I can run the storage network and have access to it over here, that would work well enough. I know you, it's pretty easy to do with an ME system. I, I can, I'm sure I could probably do that with the um, with the sorting system as well. I think there's blocks you can craft that can actually keep the chests connected, like around corners and stuff like that. So I could probably craft enough of those and run them underground and over here. But we'll see. We'll see how helpful or useful that is. Because I don't think... I think that connects the network, but that doesn't necessarily... Um, make all of the chests accessible so yeah that I don't think that would work that wouldn't work I'll have to think of something anyway that was just an idea if you know if you've got um, similar or um, your own ideas please share them with me I, I would love to know what you think of this um, arrangement so let's see I think that was pretty much all I had intended to cover in this episode um, so yeah, I, yep. Here's the other one I crafted. But yeah, so I think I'll go ahead and call this an episode here. Uh, that was pretty much what I had covered in the previous recording. And I think what we'll do in the next episode is go over to the to the village over there and uh, start um, um, assigning some of the villagers. The, help, um, the helpful villagers to their respective roles. I'm thinking it'd probably be um, a good time to start getting some miners starting to mine for us as well as maybe some farmers starting to do the farming for us. That way we can they'll collect some of the food um, items that we'll be needing in the future and the miners will actually be a really convenient way of starting to um, mine additional ores without actually having to be dependent upon a quarry. I don't I think we have everything we need for a quarry yet. Uh, I'm not, I might be mistaken. Let me take a look. Um, yeah, see, I'm going to need a lot of diamonds. I think I've got it. Well, no, I, need, I think I need more gold, too. Yeah. So we're a ways off from a quarry, obviously. I'm going to gonna need to go on the hunt for diamonds. and um, We got five diamonds in our last adventure and what I did was I took three of those diamonds and pretty much right away crafted our diamond pickaxe because we're going to need that to mine obsidian and I fully expect us to need to go to the nether here pretty soon to get quartz and other materials for some of the other machines that we're going to want to craft as well as the glass the hardened glass that we're going to want to put in the um, blacksmith shop I'm thinking so, so yeah, so I went ahead and did that so I wouldn't be tempted to use them for some other purpose. And then I'll probably take these other two and make myself a sword. So that pretty much takes care of the available diamonds we have. So we're going to definitely need um, to go on the hunt for more diamonds here real soon. Because I think we're going to need... Oh, jeez, yeah. So we're going to need 8, 11, <laughs> 11 just to do the quarry. And then, obviously, another 8 um, gold... Um, as well so yeah we need a lot of material for that so anyway the the neat thing then is, is that we can take advantage of the helpful villagers and they'll do some mining for us um, until we can get our quarry up and running and basically what they'll do is as soon as I assign a miner to that role um, they will then start digging downward in a spiral fashion ie safe and whenever they come sideways or horizontal to um, ores, they will basically mine over to those ores and pick them up. And I'm not sure how far um, horizontally they can go. Um, I'm sure it's probably limited to the, the chunk, so whatever that is. So, But that's still plenty enough to get a pretty decent amount of ores as you're da um, digging downward. And, uh, and they'll just keep going down to bedrock, um, barring any unforeseen complications like lava um, which then I think they'll just stop and go back up but basically they'll do that until nighttime appears and then they'll go back up and uh, hole up in their um, oh what's it called um, guild house and then basically they'll deposit everything that they collected in a chest there 
and that's the way it works. So pretty slick mod. I talked about it, I think, in the sep second episode a bit, and I'm looking forward to start taking advantage of it in the next episode. So that's what we'll be doing next episode, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, um, please consider doing so. That way you'll get notification of episodes as they're released. And um, yeah, and I would really appreciate your support. So uh, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.